Okay, welcome to the stream. Um, <clears throat> this week I'm trying something different. I've, uh, I'm gonna be doing most of it entirely from my iPad. So this is something I've never tried before. So let's hope all the technical details work out well. Right, so this week is National Reconciliation Week in Australia. Um, we had for the first time a public holiday in uh, the Australian Capital Territory for National uh, for Reconciliation Day on the Monday. <clears throat> and yeah, I thought it would be a good chance to look at some games that are made by Indigenous Australian people and about their experience sometimes. <clears throat> but before we start, um, a good thing to do uh, is an acknowledgement of country, which is a thing that um, we... <laughs> That is, I think that is good for us to do to acknowledge um, that we're not the first people here, and by we I mean you know colonizing and colonizing people. Hello, Gibbon. How's it going? I'm just doing the acknowledgement of country. So, uh, I acknowledge and pay respect to the past, present, and future traditional custodians and elders of this nation, and the continuation of cultural, spiritual, and educational practices of Aboriginal Torres Strait, Torres Strait Islander peoples. Ancestors have walked this country, and we acknowledge their special and unique place in our nation's historical, cultural, and linguistic identity. So, uh, I, I've just read that off uh, narragunawali.org.au, which is a um, an Indigenous education group site. Uh, I will also give the warning now that during this stream, there may be um, images or names of people who have passed away. So for Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander peoples, that can be a taboo. So um, I'm gonna acknowledge that up front. So, uh, as I was saying, Gibbon, I'm controlling the stream and telling from my iPad this week. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> so I would, what I wanted to do for this stream was look at, um, as I said, games that are by Indigenous Australians that speak to their experience uh, somewhat. So in doing so, I found a few um, websites that would help with that. Actually, this is a good place to start. This is a map made by IATSIS about um, all the different language groups of Australia. So let's just talk about what this culture is that um, span the country. It's the oldest uh, continuous culture in the world. It's been around 40,000 years, in fact, which is a bloody long time. <laughs> And these are um, some, hmm, I've got a stream preview up here that should be updating. What's going on? Oops, have I lost connection? Okay, hang on a sec. This is what I was afraid of. Okay, that looks good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So this is a map um, of all the different language groups um, that existed uh, um, in the past. According to an ABS survey, there were 250 uh, language groups, uh, distinct languages um, that existed in, um, yeah, and th this was sort of their territories. I'm gonna show you where I am, which is down here. Uh, oh, I didn't actually mention in the Ngunnawal country, in the, in the acknowledgement of country, but we're in Ngunnawal country. That's where I am. So there's a little Canberra dot there, and you can see um, it's next to Gundungurra and uh, uh, Ngaragur. Uh, the large group nearby is Wiradjuri, which does survive to some extent, but I read that the Ngunnawal language is currently extinct, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, the people live on. So it's just impressive, um, the scope of this culture and... Um, the variety of it. All these um, groups have distinct languages and there is some overlap, of course, but um, yeah. So when I was looking for video games to do in this stream, I found this pretty cool article, which was on The Conversation and also on SBS's website. They have an indigenous focused channel called NITV. And it's really interesting. I recommend checking it out. It's by Elizabeth Laponce. Um, she's, I think, a Canadian uh, indigenous person. So she's um, contributed to a few games that sort of tell her people's 
culture in, to some extent or another. Um, and this is a really interesting article. It goes into how Indigenous people have been represented in games. Um, some good examples of games uh, that are good about representation um, and different ways that um, representation can come about. Um, they mention here Never Alone, which is a really great game. It's probably the most high-profile um, Indigenous game. It's about um, a Native American people. Uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Anyway, I recommend checking this out. Um, yeah, and down here, like, it, even those small ways you can, th this game, which otherwise uh, doesn't, like, portray uh, indigenous, um, you know, themes. It, it's got the language as an option because of the developer. So, yeah, that was interesting. And here's another article that I found on IGN, um, which is pretty good. Oh, everything's got to load again. I had to reboot my iPad just before this because there were some issues with the AirPlay stuff. Um, oh, cool. Gibbon says his friend worked on Never Alone. He was one of the programmers. That's awesome. I'm reading up about it. I've been pretty impressed, and I definitely want to check it out soon. Um, so, yeah, this article is quite good. It's half about Never Alone, and it goes into detail there. And then there's um, bits after that about uh, Indigenous Australian um, development. Um, the Ujala Yala project, uh, I'm gonna talk about that in a bit because I've got that queued up. Um, however, this game that they're talking about, I couldn't find it. It seems to have gone down, unfortunately, but there's a few other things related to that project I'll be talking about. So these are so, some of the um, links I started with that got me onto uh, you know, trails to follow to find. Uh, games to talk about. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, the Ujala Yala project from Big Heart. They they made this Flash game, um, Love Punks Welcome to Roburn. They m went on to do a an interactive um, comic called Neomad. I'm going to be looking at that in a minute. Um, and then they've done a few other sort of animated storybook comic things, Wally Song which there's an illustration from it there. And the Echidna in the Dress and that other one that I can't remember the name of. But unfortunately, all three of those that are currently on their website are also gone. You can't play them. Um, the uh, They were on the App Store for iPad and they haven't been updated to support 64-bit and so Apple has deprecated them. So that's too bad. Hopefully they get updated someday. But I've got some other things to check out later anyway. So let's see, here's a resource that I mentioned before. I was reading the acknowledgement of country that's in um, this website, Narragunawali. And by <laughs> looking through here, I found this PDF, which I'm not sure I was supposed to find. I think you, you have to be a member to, to really access it, but uh, I got it somehow <laughs> through a search. Um, but scrolling down to page 17, there's a list of... Uh, apps, games, um, interactive stuff that um, relates to yeah, Australian um, indigenous uh, media. So that led me to a few things. So that's the meta aspect. Um, so now let's talk about some of the games that um, exist. I found this one particularly interesting, um, especially because it's not actually really readily available. <laughs> So it's sort of tantalizing. Um, Virtual Songlines is a project that was started by Brett Levy. You can see him here. Uh, you probably find other pictures of him on the website, but um, whoops. Whoa. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, it's. Uh, I'll play this trailer while I talk over it, I suppose. If that works. Oh, it's playing sounds. Oh, that's not good. Hang on. It's supposed to play sound through the computer, but I'll just do this for now. Um, <laughs> it's it's pretty interesting. Uh, I think that's crashed the airplay thing. Yeah, that's not working. Okay, never mind. Cancel. Um, <laughs> yes, like I said, there, there might be some technical issues. I'm using a third-party airplay clone thing on my computer because there's an official um, way to record the screen of an iPad through QuickTime, 
that just crashed every time I tried it. And I might need to update my Mac software, but I didn't have time to do that. <clears throat> Dang. Now this is broken. Okay, so anyway, Virtual Songlines is pretty cool. It's it's like a, I don't know, it seems to have changed scope a few times over the course of its uh, life um, and Brett Levy's development of it. Um, okay, there we go, good. So I won't play that video again, but I'll just go through some of these pages, I guess. Um, and there you can see Brett, he calls himself a virtual heritage Jedi. His goal was to maintain the heritage of uh, his uh, ancestral culture, which was based around Brisbane. Um, and to do so, he made a sort of 3D world. Um, yep. Uh, which represented how the land looked before uh, European settlement. So about 300 years ago. And the interesting thing was that um, uh, I, I tried playing that video before and it didn't work. Does this one? Nope, that's not the right thing. Oh, well, anyway, there's it, it shows the land and it shows silhouettes of the buildings that would be built later as sort of giant ghostly um, phantom buildings. And it was really interesting here. You can sort of see it here. Um, the City Harbor Bridge there in the background uh, showing what would one day be, but the present reality is um, fully modeled uh, forests and uh, lakes and so on, and uh, tribes people. So one build of it that I saw had you doing a sort of MMO style fetch quest kind of thing. It's like a, I think they call it a 3D simulation game at some point, but, um, and it is a single player experience. You place this, uh, as it says, a lost young warrior called Kippa. Um, and you do quests for the different tribes people and, and explore and hunt and do those kinds of things. Um, but as, yeah, they strive to be topographically and ecologically accurate, as they say here, um, to represent the land uh, accurately as it was, as a way of preserving um, the history and the culture. So it's really interesting. Um, and like I said, there's different builds of it. So certain builds are more interactive than others. And... Um, uh, each so, so uh, organizations and sort of museums and galleries can commission this company to make specific builds for their area and then they make um, yeah they make this simulation uh, of the land and um, <clears throat> and they can I think they can sort of make it interactive or just make it a video. They have plans for VR. It's all, there's all these kinds of ideas going around, but they haven't put it out as a uh, consumer product yet. So I wasn't able to play it myself, unfortunately, but it looks really interesting. And um, I guess, I don't know how you would, I don't know, maybe watch their Twitter and see if it's coming to a museum near you. <laughs> I don't know if you want to experience it. But there's some there's some good videos of it. There's a video here on the website. There's another one um, on ABC's uh, website. No, it was on Vimeo, and it said it was made by ABC, but it was I found it somewhere. I've got it here somewhere. Um, yeah, I've got one here on the Smith Journal that's got a link to a Vimeo. And anyway, check it out. <laughs> Hope that helps. Anyway, I found that really interesting, but... We can't play it, so moving on. Um, this is another thing that came up in a search. Uh, this is the first game that is going to feature text exclusively in an indigenous language. So uh, the language is uh, uh, na Nanyanchara. Sorry for my pronunciation, but um, the game's called Jinari, meaning someone always on the go, and it's an endless runner. And yeah, it's made in conjunction uh, with uh, I think it said here that children would be helping to make the voices in it. Anyway, it's not out yet, but I saw a few articles about this saying it's in development. So, but we can't play it <laughs> either. So there's a there's a yeah. I'm starting with a few things that we we aren't able to play, but we'll move on to something that I can actually interact with as we go on. Um, but yeah, this is one way that. Um, 
certain groups are trying to keep the language alive is by uh, making apps and games that kids like to interact with uh, in the language. Um, and there's more examples of that, but they're a bit less gamey than this one. So there's a lot of storybook kind of apps that I'll show you. I'll show you a bit later. <clears throat> and dictionaries and so on. But this was an attempt to really engage in a um, way that is, you know, very relatable to the youth. So another project that uh, it was intended to involve youth was this love punks thing that I mentioned earlier that was linked to the uh, IGN article. So the Ujaliella project, as I said, um, uh, yeah, they, they sort of collaborated with this group of kids who live in Roeburn, which is a mining, a small mining town in Western Australia. Um, and they made this flash game and there's some excellent photos wherever I found them of these kids using Photoshop, uh, graphics tablets. Um, they took pictures of themselves in their town and sort of cut them out and animated them. And it sounded like a really interesting thing to check out, but I couldn't, um, like clicking on it to play the game just takes you to a page not found on the current website. And I looked in the web archive on um, the Wayback Machine, couldn't find it. So they've got these other projects going now, but that one seems to have been deprecated, unfortunately. So there's another game we can't play, but um, we can actually have a look at Neomad, which is this one in the middle here which is, I think, sort of a successor to the, the, that Flash game. Um, it's got a similar style. Uh, so why don't we open that up right now? Hopefully the sound works. Nope, it's not working properly. It's coming out of the iPad. How do I fix that? Oh, it's lost the connection again. Okay, I'll be right back. Ah, good. Sounds coming through now. Let me just check OBS to see if that's working. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Thank goodness. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, cool. So this is, um, like I said, it's a comic book. Uh, it's an animated motion comic fully voiced with live action movies in it as well. Oh, that's going to drop again, isn't it? Hopefully not. Let's see. Checking my preview. Hey, it actually worked. What do you know? So anyway, um, I guess it's not important. We're not going to go through the whole thing. But yeah, they they got these kids involved in this way. They they filmed them. Um, um, oh, this is different. This must be the part two one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's like these fil short films, and then yeah, I, I started on episode two. So sorry about that. Anyway. <laughs> whatever I was looking through it earlier um of course I am still uh during this year trying to spotlight uh female creators and female characters in games so episode two works for that because there's a lot more um uh yeah girls involved in this stage of the project um there's a lot of little boys so uh, the the website said before I think it's mainly nine ten and eleven year olds um so yeah, anyway, the Neomad project is a comic. <laughs> it doesn't start like this. Why don't we show you where it really starts? Because um, it starts with some kids in their actual town of Roeburn or a fictionalized version of it. But in the future, where it's sort of a Mad Max situation, um, uh, they're living in a wasteland that's irradiated and um yeah this is how it goes and it's fully voiced you click any of these speech bubbles and um yeah the f it, you, it's fully voiced which is nice and the motion it's really cool i like the art style um and yeah you can see the kids are all done up mad max style um with their costumes and their face paint and stuff so the story is about a spaceship that crashes to earth and uh, hijinks at you. I don't really know. <laughs> I haven't gone through the whole thing, but um, yeah, I like the style and the um, setting. So. Hmm, what is it? Yeah, yeah, with a booster, with a booster. Wait, with a booster. 
<laughs> and you can see they've obviously got kids deeply involved in the process of creating it, which is amazing. Um, so, yeah, this one is about episode two, like I was saying, they introduce these characters called the Satellite Sisters who live in this spaceship. I assume that they're going to come to Earth at some point and meet the other characters. Maybe that rocket didn't actually yeah, and so here's... Here's the thing that they actually talk about on the website is um, portraying this theme of elders passing wisdom on to the next generation of children and how that's a big part of the... It's a very important part of their culture, obviously. Um, yeah. So I was really impressed by this. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I, uh, we'll stop that there, I guess. Um, but that will transition into... I guess, um, what can we do next? Dreamtime stories? They're nice. I remember as a kid, um, I had picture books of Dreamtime stories, so it's very nostalgic to me, but um, it's a way of, um, yeah, the stories of the indigenous people. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So some of these apps start with acknowledgement of country, which is nice. Um, we acknowledge we, the Noongar people, yeah, the Noongar people as the original custodians of the land. Cool stuff. Um, so this is an app called Dreaming. It was put out by Western Australia. Um, something. Department of... Um, I don't know. I, I don't remember. But anyway, it's got uh, an explanation of the seasons, the, the system that the uh, Indigenous people of that area used, which is interesting, how it lines up with our modern four seasons um some uh language uh some artwork and what it means um you know animal tracks yeah the people sitting down are these sort of curved shapes and seen from above uh and yeah dream story dream time stories um which are like the mythology of uh the indigenous people so some of them are like just so stories like this how the uh Trudich got its spots. I think a Chudich is a quokka, maybe? I'm not sure. Um, this app's nice. It's it's voiced. Someone reads the story to you and you can uh, read the uh, text as well. Once upon a time, and there's this artwork, which is not in a, in a completely traditional style, but a sort of traditional inspired but um, an ex and, uh, evolution of that, which is interesting. Um, and this is how... Yeah, this is like a really old creation story um the spirits that were first created woggle the snake um is oh yeah yeah there's there's five creatures and um uh because humans have excellent hands they were uh they became sort of prominent and we have to care for plants and animals and lands and waters so yeah stuff like that but there's also Okay, so I talked about, so in Neomad, um, uh, yeah, kids were involved in the process. Uh, these apps are the same way. So uh, these were created by, oops. <laughs> oh, there's an adults area. Uh, six, uh, hang on, uh, 50, uh, 61. Cool. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this is information about the app. Um, made by Kiwa, and I think the Victorian government is the one who uh, commissioned these. So there's credits here. Each of all the apps here along the top row are this kind of storybook style. Um, this one at the end is not made by kids. It's um, kind of an adaptation or a tie-in to a TV show, Little Jane Big Cuz. Uh, but it's in the same style. But we'll look at the ones that are about, um, yeah, these dreaming stories. I find them interesting. Why don't we just read through one? Because this is sort of an interactive storybook kind of thing. So not strictly a game, but um, I guess depending how old you are, uh, it's um, <laughs> interactive entertainment. So uh, a bit like Neomad, this is voiced as well. Are the birds got their colour? And yeah, if you touch. I Claire Garvey, Jody Dixon, Courtney Luscombe, and Brianna Pritchard. Yeah, um, the kids have made the artwork. They've recorded their voices telling the story. Um, the dream time, and you can hear them. But 
now the birds have colour. By swiping over the words. The yeah, so that's cool. Uh, why don't I read a bit? One day, a bird was searching for food, but to its surprise, it stepped on a sharp piece of tree branch and it stuck into its foot. All the birds helped, except the crow. He told the other birds not to and was jealous because everyone was looking after that bird and not him. A bird put its beak around the sharp bark and pulled it out. Color flew out of the bird's foot and fell onto all the other birds, giving them color. And that's how the birds got their color. The birds that helped the bird got color, and the selfish ones didn't. That's why the crow has no color. So yeah, that's cool. Um, I remember other uh, stories that I had in my books that were like how the um, kangaroos got their tails, uh, which is they used to not have tails, but some humans were hunting them one day and threw spears at them and they got stuck in their butt and that became their tails. <laughs> that's the kind of thing we're talking about here. Um, but yeah, it's 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 good having these stories passed on by the children that they were told to. And like I said, it's the, it's that old tradition thing. They're passing on their own culture um, from generation to generation. And this is another way of doing that is through these apps. So this particular app um, has multiple stories in it, but these other apps are one story each. So there's one about the platypus, one about b uh, bats, and one about koalas. Um, w w which one? Koalas. So yeah, the glossary of uh, words. Uh, th oh yes, that's the other thing. Uh, there's a coloring book feature, I think. How does this work? I haven't tried this yet. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. <laughs> so this is another thing that I guess can make it fun for kids. You can look at the artwork that was already made by um, these other people and you can draw on it yourself. So that's nice. Um, yes. So the feature of those other three apps, apart from that uh, central one at the start, is that they have multi-language settings. So uh, you can have them read in uh, Woiwurrung or English. And I, I'd go back to the map, but it would take a while to look for it. Uh, Woiwurrung is obviously the um, language of <laughs> the people who made the book. <laughs> yeah. So. So that's the story. Or. Why are the koalas got Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um. What time is it? Okay, well, we'll move on. Um, but yeah, this is sort of a story about the koala. They had <laughs> some sap from the tree. People wanted... <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, and then people... Oh, wow, that's brutal. Anyway. <laughs> So all those apps are still available and still work on current iPads, unlike um, some of the other ones made by the Wajiwala project. Wajiwala project, unfortunately. Yes, so I think at this point we're going to... Okay, so jumping off from... Um, actually, why don't I show you this real quick? This is a fun app I found, Welcome to Country. Um, like I said, um, the people of my area are the Nanawal people but you can uh, go to this app and it's by no means comprehensive, but um, how did I do this before? Map, yeah. Uh, you can sort of see who currently lives in various areas that are nearby to you and it uses uh, location settings. Um, and when you're there, it shows you a video of someone from that uh country welcoming you, welcoming you to it and then a bit of information about the people uh, yeah so that was nice and on that subject of language this app was pretty cool like I said Ngunnawal is uh, an extinct language um, but the closest one I, I showed you the large um, I hope this is still working yep looks like it the large uh, brown spot Uh, closest is the Wirajuri. So there's a language app made for that, and you can look up different things. 
Uh, where's the... Yep, yep, yep. So, for example, the kangaroo rat. So cute. Uh, and it should be... Yeah, listen. Kangaroo rat. Calbo. Calbo. So, yeah. Um, there's a suite of these apps of this uh, type uh, made by... The, um, uh, somebody, don't remember who, um, of different uh, languages. There's about uh, a dozen of them. Um, yes, so that was interesting. Cool. Yes, okay, so that's language stuff. Um, we're going to continue with language stuff, uh, but I'm going to... Mm, yes. Hello, Qburn. How's it going? <laughs> I've With all my swapping around, I'm, I'm not always looking at the chat, but it's good to see you. Uh, speaking of that, uh, I'm going to have to, like I said, I'm going to try and do almost all iPad, but I have to swap over for this one because it didn't recognize the microphone. All right, let me check that this is working. Yep, that looks fine. So I've got chat on iPad now in case anything happens. Um, stop, 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 stop. Oh, it's still displaying as Alien 3. It didn't recognize any of the games I tried to put in. <laughs> um, uh, the one I'm, I'm going to be playing most later on is called Second Chances, and it wasn't on the list of Twitch's supporter games. So I'm still playing Alien 3, but I'm not actually. Anyway, this is a... Uh, um, that did work, right? Okay, just tell me if there's any weird problems. Um, <laughs> um, but this is, uh, yeah, a really interesting little web app about, yeah, keeping the languages alive, like I said. So um, this is another way that they've that people have come up with to do that. And, yeah, so this story needs your voice. Over the next 10 minutes, you'll speak one of the oldest languages in the world. Each word you learn unlocks a new chapter. Put on your headphones and get your microphone ready. So hope this works. Yes, looks like it's working. Good. So it's estimated the language is lost globally every two weeks. More than 90% of Australia's indigenous languages are critically endangered. Um, oh, I mentioned at the start how there were all these language groups, 250 of them. Um, according to an ABS survey, only 145 remain today. And yeah, a lot of them are struggling to hold on. Um, so one of those languages is Mara. Oh, and that 145 figure, that was a survey done in 2005, so it might, it's probably even dropped since then. But um, yes, so this is a story about uh, this person's grandmother. So the, it's going to speak a word, and then I'm going to repeat the word to um, Mara? learn it. Mara? 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 Oh boy, is it working? Mara? Am I getting it right or what? Oh, I'll hit skip for now. <laughs> okay. I, I like the animation in this a lot. I saw the intro earlier. I was like, wow. You can see the um, traditional Hello. dot painting style. My name okay. is Angelina Joshua. I'm from a small community called Nuka which is southeast of Arnhem Land, hmm. seven hours drive down from Darwin. Hmm. So yeah, this is a really great, <laughs> great looking app and uh, just a way of telling uh, this, these people's stories. So can you say this motto word right three times? Three times, okay. Um, each time you do a dot will fill up. Oh, I see. Okay. Wanganangil. Wanganangin. 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 Okay. Wanganangin. 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 Those dots aren't filling up. Wanganangin. Wanganangin. Wangar Nangin. Wangar Nangin. I'm kind of doing an Indian accent. It's like 
try and pronounce words in other languages. And then you end up doing weird accents that aren't appropriate. <clears throat> Warangarnangi. Yeah, this ain't working. I did it. <laughs> yes. Wow. Okay. Ooh. Mara is my grandmother language and I didn't get the chance to um, learn Mara in school but now I really want to learn my grandmother's lingo. When I started hearing my grandmother speak Mara, it was actually beautiful listening to her talking and I always say to myself, I hope one day I could understand that lingo, you know? Hmm. Radpur? 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 Radpur. Radpur. Radpur? 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 Mm, it's complicated. I'm no linguist, but I know there's a lot of subtle uh, sounds that can happen in your mouth. And if you're not used to them in your native language, they can be hard to pronounce properly. Radpur. 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 Dang. This is strict. This is way too strict. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll just skip ahead, I guess. Radpur. I tried. You can, you can hear I tried. House. It's frustrating. Maybe I'm just really bad at it. Uh, In sorry. In our community, there's only three people can now speak Mara. Oh, wow. Because language, it's our identity, right? Yeah. And culture, totems, countries, and skin names. Mm. Our language is very important to us. It's dying, you know? It's fading away really slowly. Mm. That's why we're trying to keep it alive, you know? It's like I can't back down now, you know? On my feet every morning, you know? You know, ready to go, you know, to work. What God? What God? What God? What God? Sort of a rolling of the R, just slightly. What God? 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 How does it want me to say this? Anyway, English, um, Latin letters, uh, can't always Fire. super accurately uh, portray the sounds of these languages. So that's why in the uh, Welcome to Country app, you saw there are a lot of variant spellings for Nanawal. I skimmed through it pretty quickly, so you might not have seen it, but um, yeah, there's a, you often find variant I'm spellings. I'm a part-time work worker at the language center mainly we record language fluid speakers teaching me all different words you know like mm. animals plants and people names and yeah our quiet place is um, available so it's more better than recording at the language center mm. only just can hear the birds and the water actually yeah and yeah it was pretty cool actually when i first learned my first sentence Bora Mimi. that's me and that's all now yeah it's pretty amazing <laughs> after work when i knock off when I think of what I've learned, you know, if it's a sentence or a word, I'll sit down and think about it, and then I'm imagining my grandma 
like still alive, still there, you know, telling stories in Mara. And I miss all that. Mm. Balba? Balba? So yeah, given it is a fascinating little game and like the interactivity comes from you learning these words and then you're awarded with a little cutscene of um, a story. But yeah, it looks fantastic. Um, and yeah, it's just another way that people have tried to preserve their language and culture. Um, Balba? 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 Damn it, recognize me. Balba. Balba? Balba? Anyway, I think I did okay. <laughs> Balba? Judging myself now. River? Dad taught me, once when you're going to grow up, try to keep our culture strong and I always say how do i gotta do with that by talking actually just talking caring and you no know, teaching other younger ones you know it's like you can't do it once when you're older and i'm long gone you're still carrying that knowledge you know that i've mm. taught you i hope for the future half of the people in the community could speak and understand Mara and there would be a group of people there teaching, you know, like it just keeps on going like school, everyday learning. Walanyan. 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 <laughs> ah, the animation is great. Walanyan. 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 I don't know what this app wants from me. It got me to check the microphone was working and everything, but oh well. Walanyan. I think it's worth it. <laughs> Fish. Walanyan. My dad, if he would have been alive, and my grandmother, they would have been over the clouds. Gosh, my baby girl can speak Mara, you know? Mm -hmm. It's a great feeling, you know? It's an amazing feeling. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I guess I read my location somehow, but yeah. I'm impressed by this. I don't know where that is exactly, but yeah. That's cool that people have <laughs> yeah, it shows you other people who've done it. That's really interesting. Um, so yeah, that's um, that's what is this? What is my grandmother's lingo? My grandmother's lingo is the name of this game. Um, and yeah, what a beautiful little piece of art. Um, yeah, so that was cool, um, and we learned something. So let's switch over back to the iPad. Great, still working. <laughs> cool.
So I'll stop this now. Okay, good. Good. Okay. Um, okay, what have we got next? Let's see here. I think the last thing I've got, apart from uh, just talking about a couple of things, do, 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 is the next game, Second Chances. So why don't I introduce it first? So what have I done here? Yeah, this is the page for Neo Mad. I had my grandmother's lingo loaded up here, but I didn't recognize the, um, didn't recognize, oh, it's dropped again. I didn't recognize the microphone when I was doing it on the iPad, so that's why I had to switch over to computer. Okay, good. All right, so next game I'm looking at is called Second Chances. Um, I, I like, I really like the style of this one, and um, I actually heard about this when it was first being developed because it came out of a project by AIM, um, which is the Australian Indigenous Mentoring Experience. Um, and yeah, I guess Google sponsored that. Uh, and it's, is this, oh, hmm. Uh, I'll have to get the website of the game, I think, but um, anyway, this is a, okay, so AIM is a project that, um, yeah, provides mentoring for, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, mentoring for Indigenous uh, school students, um, and this came out of a contest that they held where groups of uh, kids in the mentoring program uh, pitched a game idea and it was judged by uh, this group of people here including uh, Hex from Good Game which is uh, the, a, t a TV show that um, was on ABC here which is our public broadcaster um, oh um, yeah yeah so I saw this uh, segment on the show about this game which is how I heard about it and um, since then, they've actually made the game and put it out, and it's still up on iOS and on uh, Android, so that's nice. Um, the idea was to make a fun game that was also had an educational component. Um, it's not specifically about the uh, indigenous culture the same way that um, some of these other ones, like Virtual Songlines or uh, My Grandmother's Lingo, are, but... It's made by Indigenous students, and I think a lot of the characters are intended to be Indigenous, but anyway, we'll, we'll launch the game and we'll experience it together. Oh no, it's crashing again. Damn. Oops. Okay. Please work. Damn. Hmm. Okay, I, I guess I'll reboot my iPad again because that worked last time. So we'll be right back after these messages. Um, <laughs> second chances. I'll give this game a second chance, eh? Uh, the other thing about second chances that I found uh, appealing was that um, the main character you saw in that key art is Marley. Um, and yeah, she's a girl, so... That's my whole thing this year, again, is doing games about uh, girls and women. So it fit perfectly into this week's uh, streaming program. So hope this works this time. Oh my goodness, no, why? Why are you doing this to me now? I swear this was working earlier. I guess, what, what else can I do? What else can I do? Um, I could launch the game and then connect to mirroring. Stop mirroring. Launch game. OK, 
Okay, so now it's working. I think that order of operations is the key. And the sound coming through. I have to check this again. Sound is coming through. But the video is not coming through. Did I switch back? Yes. Curses. Oh no, this is gonna ruin the whole thing if this doesn't work. Why? Oh, I know what's wrong. Yeah, whenever you restart the the mirroring software, it has a different window name, so OBS like de recognizes it. Okay. Oh, yes, okay, it's working. Hi Zach, welcome to the stream. <laughs> Having a few little technical hiccups, but we're we're powering through them and I th I think we've I've got it working now. So I was just testing this out earlier, so we're gonna reset the data and start from the start again. So this is a basically a soccer game. Yeah, so here's the intro. Um, I think the... I should have had the website of the actual game. But... Yeah. One of the key quotes is that it's a mix of... Or a sort of mashup of hip-hop and medieval imagery. <laughs> So yeah, it's a classic underdog sports story. You have to, you're coming into this school, ah, uh, the background failed to load, it, it did this before. It's got the loading screen as the background, it shouldn't have that, but um, oh no. Okay, it's working, good. All right, so this guy here is um, Jack, uh, Jack Manning Bancroft, who is the CEO of AIM, and he's uh, he appears in the game as a helper character. Um, Dudes and dudettes, this is AIM High. We are under the pump and about to get shut down. Hook some brothers and sisters up and get in. Here's the deal. You gotta play soccer and you gotta take down these monster cats to get a proper fit. To get proper fit. Uh, school is where we get our skills lit. Bang a gong, let's get it on. So yeah, Molly, um, as you saw in the intro, she's new to the school and she has to get team into shape so they can win soccer matches and stuff. Um, Marley actually is potentially named after uh, Marley Silva, who is thanked in the spe special thanks in the credits, um, who at the time was the co-CEO of AIM. Uh, she was sort of doing a CEO internship thing, which sounded pretty intensive, but um, yeah, I think she might have yeah, been uh, an influence on the game. Anyway, so saving the school means beating extreme high. The whole school is underperforming, our grades aren't great, and our team has never won a game. They've sent the digester to eat the skull, but it'll take weeks to get here. So it's arriving at the end of the soccer season then. We have time to get better, right? It's hopeless. We'd have to train like Razor Beasts to win against Extreme High. Training. Guys, I know just the place. And where do you think you're going? That's my skeletal voice. Well, who are you? I am the one with the power to change your fate. If you prove yourself worthy, follow me this way. Hector is a hectic unicorn boss. Just you wait and see. Check his secret match winning skills. Welcome. This is a test to prove. Whoops. Answer these questions three. Only then can I. Whoops. Okay. It's just going through. Yes. So this is the education component, as I said. Um you have to answer questions. Molly is running. The rate of velocity changed during times called acceleration. I did science. Yes, this is for middle school children. Next on the agenda. If Molly runs, she will accelerate in speed. If she doubles her running force, acceleration will double. True or false? That is true because F equals MA. Excellent. I don't know what running force is, but yes. If Dante kicks the ball at 50 meters per second, what distance does it cover over five seconds? So 50 meters in one second, 250 meters in five seconds. Woot. Well done, each of you has a unique skill. I've enabled power stored within you for the match ahead. Okay, so all five of our members have got skills or four. Uh, 
anyway. Five, four, five. I guess those blue guys didn't get a look in. Um, oh wait, that's six because there's two of them. Who are these? The Dum Doms. Yeah, okay, so you have to win soccer matches to prove that your school is like worthy of funding or whatever because the school's gonna get shut down. Um, but yeah, so I really like the art style in this game. Um, and in the soccer matches, it transitions into this 3D style that still keeps the same um, look, which is really impressive. And I like the background details too, very cute. So don't run into it out of bounds, go to the goal area. Uh, you, you might be able to see it. This is being done with a virtual thumbstick, which is not the best, but um, hold down, shoot. When you're facing the goal, the player indicator turns red. Wonderful. Tackle. Great. This would probably be really good with an iOS, um, like a, oops, you know, like a, a joystick, a Bluetooth um, gamepad kind of thing. Oh, I tried, I tried. Yeah, tricked it. Pass the ball to an eye. Whoops. Do I need to hold that down? Yes, I do. Okay. Press and hold down pass. Oh, whoops. <laughs> no, that's good. No um, out of bounds. That's nice. Keeps the game moving. Okay, so hold it down, then release, and then press kick. Wait, what? Oh no, I've lost, I've lost it. Oh no, and now the game's crashed. Oh, this is not working as well as I hoped. Ah, oh, it's doing this again. I, uh, I hope I don't have to cut the stream too short, but at least I got to show what the game looks like because I'm really impressed by that. Um, ah, Zach says it looks a bit Adventure Time. Yeah, I could see that actually. A little bit cow arts or whatever. However they say it. So I think I got the idea. Oh, we're back at the test. Is it coming through now? Yep, yeah, okay. So it didn't save until, yeah. So do, 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 go through this. Oh, I was hoping I'd be able to show off tons of this game because it's great. I really like the style and the gameplay is not bad either. So we can skip the tutorial this time. <laughs> I love this background detail. It's amazing. Oh, dodged it. Okay, I have to press this button to switch between... Oh, they've already scored! Oh, man. Rough. Rough stuff. Wow, nice replay stuff. Yeah. Oh, cool stuff. I would say buy this game on um, console. By the way, this um, is a free game on iOS and Android. Oh, brutal. Molly is down. All right. Pass, whoops, wrong button. It's okay, uh, switch. Oh, golly was there, okay. Yeah, soccer games can be tricky. I um, this actually reminds me with the setup and everything of um, Ubisoft's game Academy of Champions Football, which I played because uh, Rayman was an unlockable character in it. Uh, pass, good. Pass, shoot, whoops. Yeah, you need to be facing the goal. This is actually a pretty technical game. Oh, sprint, I didn't see that before. That's useful. Um, cool. Yeah, so Academy Champions Football is uh, pretty interesting. It was on the Wii. Um, I think it had a bunch of uh, con uh, control options, as so certain Wii games did. Like, you could use the balance board, you could use the Wii Motion Plus, etc., etc. Um, I just played it as normally as I could without. Uh, now, I don't even remember if motion controls are optional or not. So let's do the solo thing. Whoop, 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 whoop. 
Oh, I <laughs> didn't quite get the shot off. The goalie got to me. Um, yeah, so in that game you were like at a school, like a soccer school. It was sort of um, Hogwarts for soccer. And your teacher was, or your principal or whatever, was Pele in a celebrity cameo. Um, and yeah, you could sort of unlock these... Um, Oops, I was too close to the boundary, I guess. I got electrocuted. Yeah, you could get these... Um, uh, I want to call them soccer mercenaries <laughs> to, like, join your team temporarily for a match, um, which is where Rayman came into it. Him and Jade from Beyond Good and Evil, um, Sam Fisher from Splinter Cell, um, who else? The Prince from Prince of Persia 2008, like the reboot one. Um, who else was there? I drew a picture of them once, a pixel art of all of the guest characters, because I was so into Rayman, um, and I still am, of course. Um, oops, keep hitting shoot instead of pass. Oh no, time's almost out. Do I have another half, or am I just gonna lose? Oh no. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, there were definitely rabbits in the game as well, I'm sure. <laughs> um, there must be one other. Jade, Rayman, a rabbit, Sam Fisher, Prince, and Ubisoft. Who's in Ubisoft? Oh, it's probably Altair. I think it's Altair um, from off of Assassin's Creed. Uh, so anyway, that was a fun game. Now the game is frozen, I think. That's a problem. Yeah, it's stuck on this one screen. Okay, I'm gonna... I'm sure the game is more stable than this normally. The mirroring is definitely messing with the stability of some of these things that I'm doing. So apologies. We're gonna at least try and <laughs> clear one match <laughs> before I give up on this uh, technical mumbo jumbo oh, I did it the wrong way around again okay stop mirroring launch the app when it's loaded start mirroring again okay day on venus is longer than a year uh, we're gonna have to do this every time actually maybe I can save by like quitting out of the um, quitting out of the match. Oh, the skills. I, I don't know how to use those, actually. I do like the soundtrack, too. As they said, kind of hip-hop inspired. Um, yeah, this game was made by Mode, by the way. Why don't we go to the credits while we're here? Mode Games. Um, they've done a few interesting looking things. Um, yep, I don't remember any of the other ones, but I'm certainly impressed by this game. Um, the Kledge that you see there, that's the team of kids um, who came up with the concept. And um, yeah. And then uh, people from AIM, I assume you see Marley Silver's name there. Um, yeah, and Google, who helped fund the whole contest. So, what can I do? What does this do? Classic jewel. Oh, what's that? I guess I'll try it. Okay, so... I quit out of the match. Ah, okay, I always have to do... I always have to do the quiz before a match. Okay, that's fine. Sonic Dash, Big Boy, Fireball, Boo. I like the random facts on the loading screens too. Oh. Oh, I see. It's like a dual virtual thumbstick. So by moving this one towards the different uh, commands, I can do them. I don't know if I like that better. We'll see. 
Sprint. Shoot. Oh, yeah, I got too close to the goalie. Um, so yeah, Academy of Champions football was interesting. It was... Mm, yeah, I don't know about this thumbstick thing. I'm going to switch back. Okay. No, 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 no. Zoom. Uh, yeah, so you're a kid in a school. You're like bottom of the class or whatever. You have to improve your skills through training, which involved like visual novel like choices and you choose what exercises you're going to do to train different um, stats and stuff. You befriend players and get them on side. Um, oh, nasty. And yeah, then you play in games and, and it had a nice look to it as well. Um, the pitch was kind of stylized in that it was curved really sharply. So you're on this like tiny little world kind of thing. And as you run along, it curves beneath you. Um, but uh, I got through, I think, like one semester of the story mode. And then there's a bit where you get transferred to a different school and like none of your teammates carry over. And you have to do a quite hard match uh, before you're allowed to progress in the story. And you're not really allowed to do much customization or training before doing that. So it was really a roadblock for me, and I was like, this game sucks anyway. I wasn't having fun, so I stopped. And I guess you can read more about that in my blog review, if you can, if you care to find it. Um, I didn't even actually manage to see Rayman before getting to that point, and a lot of stuff in like the free play multiplayer mode is just locked behind story progression, which is something that really bugs me about uh, just games in general. <laughs> Um, cause it happens all the time. You, um, yeah, it was too close. Like you just want to be able to open up a, maybe a multiplayer game or just a free play mode and just be able to do what you want. But you have to do this tedious campaign mode to really unlock anything at all. All right. Yes. Oh no. Yep. <laughs> Um, oh, hang on a sec. Oh yeah, no one's been chatting at all, so that's fine. <laughs> this is just for me at this point. I really want to get through this. I guess people are still watching. That's cool. Oh, here we go. Sudden death. Nobody scored, so first to score wins now at this point. Okay, so go up here and then pass. Molly! You should have crossed to the center. Don't think there's an offside rule in this game. Doesn't seem like it. I used to be a soccer referee, by the way, so I do know the rules um, as well as playing the game. But yeah, for a few years um, in high school, I got some sweet pocket money by um, yeah, refing games on weekends. Actually, I only refed one game. <laughs> I was mostly a linesman. Because, um, oh, good. No worries, says Gibbon. Um, yeah, I was mostly a linesman because I would play on Saturday and then, oops, it's dropped again. I know because the sound started coming through my iPad. Damn, that's so frustrating. Let's see if this works. It's not going to work. It never works. I was in sudden death too. All right, never mind. I, I at least want to get through this one match before giving up entirely. Yeah, so I'd be playing soccer on Saturday morning. Um, oh, and the issue was that you, when you're refereeing a game, you have to referee for age groups that are younger than you um, by a few years. Um, and if you uh, are, yeah, if you want to do a game that's sort of your age or a bit younger or older, um, you can only linesman that and you get paid less. Uh, this is unnecessary detail. Anyway, um, yeah, because I was playing on Saturday and all the 
younger age groups played on Saturday, I couldn't ref on Saturday as well. So I um, had to, the controls are switched back. So yeah, the older groups played on Sunday and that was the only time I was free. So I could only linesman basically, unless it was an open day, in which case um, that's like a special event where you play a bunch of shorter sort of matches round Robin style. Um, so I think I did one of those a few times. Um, by the way, I like the detail that Marley's leg is a giant hammer. It's kind of steampunk. Um, makes her good at kicking, I suppose. Pass, shoot, whoops. Well, I tried. Sprint, nope. This is nasty. Uh. I wonder what was the first, like, soccer game like this that wasn't a sim as much. I guess games have always the older they are, the less simmy they are, I suppose. I would guess. But I'm thinking of, like, I mean, I mentioned, so Academy of Champions Football. Another soccer game that I've enjoyed is uh, Mario. Oh, what's it called? Mario. Um, Super Mario Strikers is the Wii one. Um, give me a minute, I'll come up with it, but. <laughs> It was like Mario Slam Football was the European title. You know what? Never mind. It's it's the the Wii Mario game <laughs> that's about soccer. <laughs> yeah, I just tackled someone. I guess nobody, no ref is watching this game. Um, maybe that bar next to my team name is the special meter, but I don't know how to fill it up or use the special. Anyway. Um... Yeah, what's it called? Super Mario Strikers. That game is just oozing with style. It's amazing. Um, it's really fun seeing the Mario characters who are normally sort of image controlled and kept uh, constant. Um, in this game, they're all done up in like gridiron armor and glowing neon strips and stuff. It's really crazy. It's got a fantastic style to it, that game. And the gameplay tries to be all flashy as well. So you have super special moves and like explosion kicks and stuff. Um, Academy of Champions was a bit more sedate in its special powers, seemingly the way this is as well. But um, I haven't actually used any super moves yet. So we'll see when we get to that. Um, did I mention I'm not good at games, by the way? That's just a thing that I'm not good at, video games. Okay. Oh, I did charge my skill, go for goal. Whoa, what's going on? Oh, okay. I wasn't controlling the guy. Oh! <laughs> I don't know what his skill actually is, but he was glowing, so I thought that made him invulnerable or something. Ah, oh, it ran out. Dang. Oh well. <laughs> These jewel doms don't have a special skill. So yeah, um... I think it's Mario Smash Football in PAL. But anyway, that, that game is... Uh, like, I love the look of it, like I said, and, um, but the gameplay got pretty hard, just like Academy of Champions. Maybe I'm just no good at soccer games, but at some point there was a difficulty spike and I couldn't handle it. Um, I actually felt the same way about, um, a lot of tennis games I've played, so, I don't know, maybe it's just a sports thing. Why am I not getting the shoot off right? Maybe I need to charge it longer. Oops. Hmm. Oh, tricky. I wonder if I can trick past the goalie. Would that be overpowered? Um, 
better off passing, I think. Whoops. Nasty. Pass. Ah, oh, no, I've lost it again. <laughs> All right, I guess, I guess maybe we'll stop there. <laughs> Because this just keeps screwing up. <sighs> oh well. Um, hold on a sec. I'll... I wanted to talk about a couple other things. Um, like I mentioned, Never Alone. When I was trying to search for Indigenous Australian games, a lot of the results you get in the um, in the search thingy um, are for this game called Survival Island Three, which is a subject of great controversy. Um, it's a game that was on the iOS App Store, and it was like this survival game. Like there's a billion of them on every marketplace, but um, it was like you have to survive in the Australian wilderness and you do it by killing a bunch of animals and you also get attacked and have to murder um, uh, native people as well. And there was a big outcry about that. The game got taken down um, and good riddance, so don't look for that one anymore. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, that's sort of the dark side of indigenous games, I suppose. Ooh. Yeah, pretty problematic. Um Anyway, that's the, here's the official website of uh, um, the game. Is this showing up? Yes, it is. Uh, from Mode Games. Um, so I don't know, check that out. A game about hip-hop education and kicking amazing goals. So there's some other characters you can see in the key art that I didn't unlock, like this kid with the jetpack. The buff guy, the blue twins, um, there's concept art for them all on this page, so you can see screenshots. Oh, and the yeti guy. Oh, I wanted the yeti guy, but oh well. So in this, you can see character concept art. So Marley, I really like her design. Um, Burger, Gog and Mog, Rip, um, who has just big steel things on his hands. Srin. Um, who appears to be some kind of goblin creature. <laughs> uh, Yoki, who is a very appealing character. Yeah. And let's see what some of the courts could have looked like. Or, what do you call them? Pitches? Uh, soccer pitch. Yeah, soccer pitch. That sounds right. Nice graffiti stuff, yeah. Love it. An urban environment. Um... Oh yes, uh, we didn't get get up to the plot part, but there's supposedly this antagonist character called the Digestor. Surely it mentions it somewhere. Anyway, you can see it in this piece of concept art. Uh, a giant man in a suit who wants to eat everything. I guess he represents the government or something. Um, but yeah, he's sort of the antagonist character. You have to train up your squad so that you don't get eaten by him as the the end uh, state. Um, yeah, what else was there? I guess I'll mention Dead Island and Dead Island Riptide. There's an Aboriginal character in that. That's just something I found when looking up indigenous stuff. Yeah, there's a, one of the playable characters, um, Perna Jackson. Um, anyway, I think this is a cool concept a good game um it's quite well made and i am sad that i didn't get to show off more of it but if it crashes before i can even finish one match then it's kind of untenable but i'll probably be playing more of that on my own time um here is the digestor uh facing annihilation for a monstrous mindless creature oh we didn't even get to see i swear there was a screen at some point where you saw the school and it's like, it looks like a medieval inn that's kind of ramshackle. But like I said at the start, the um, loading screen had 
loaded in behind the character portraits for the dialogue instead of the actual scene that it should have been. So, ugh, that's an unfortunate bug. But, um, yeah, anyway, this was a cool initiative to help um, Indigenous students uh, be creative, and um, I liked it a lot. But equally, all the other um, games I've seen today about... Uh, which have more of an emphasis on um, uh, passing on their culture uh, are both uh, educational, informative, very important culturally, and also um, uh, <laughs> hopefully entertaining. <laughs> That's the idea. But yeah, again, check out this article. Um, and yeah, I guess wherever you are, read up about your um, native people <laughs> your, your native population um because yeah there i know here in australia and in america uh the native peoples are very hard done by um by european settlement and that's a gross understatement um so you know it's the least we can do to um, try and learn more about their culture and support them in whatever way we can. So I think that's it for today. Um, thanks for joining me. I had fun researching this and um, <laughs> there were a few dead ends, uh, unfortunately, going through uh, the games that were available. But we found a few good ones, I think. And yeah, some impressive games and fun. Um, so... That's it. Happy Reconciliation Week. Uh, um, uh, thanks for joining me, and um, I'll be back next week with something cool, probably, maybe. We'll see. So we'll see you then. And yeah, this iPad experiment actually worked mm, okay, so maybe it's an option for the future. <laughs> but if we get as many crashes as we did with uh, Second Chances, that will be a sad time. But... Yes, thanks for joining me. Goodbye. Goodbye. Night-night possums. <laughs>